So this lecture is going to go through the topic of vectors and scalars. And this is a really valuable piece of information. Um, a lot of the things that we deal with in physics are scalars, but understanding how and what to do with vectors is probably a really key uh, component to being able to work through problems successfully. So first off, what's the difference between a scalar and a vector? Uh, I classify a scalar as any value or any measurement with only a magnitude. And by magnitude, uh, that just means kind of size. That means the size. So in terms of things that are scalars, we've talked about speed or distance, um, work and energy, uh, mass. There is no direction associated with these. Um, and so most of the concepts that we're going to deal with are scalars, and we just deal with them as any other number. right? We can add, subtract, multiply, divide as any other number would be able to. Um, but think of that as like, you know, number of apples. Like if I had an apple, right, I, I can't have a positive or a negative apple or I can't have a direction associated with it. There's just a certain number. So it's a value that is only a magnitude. Um, but the new thing for us is going to be vectors. And a vector is a value that has uh, both a magnitude as well as a direction. So concepts we've talked about would be the displacement, velocity, acceleration, force are going to be vectors, uh, momentum, impulse, and electric fields. So these are all the main ideas that we're going to talk about that have uh, or are vectors. And Vectors, again, are classified by not only having a magnitude, but a direction. And we're going to use arrows to help us designate vectors in a sense that an arrow can tell us both magnitude and direction. So if we're talking about displacement, I think displacement's the easiest one to look at. Um, if someone started here and they end here, right, their displacement is this line. And maybe they walked 10 meters in that direction. So that's their displacement, 10 meters in that direction. Well, if someone walked only five meters, their displacement would be represented like this. And so that's a different magnitude. They ended at a different location. And so they have a different magnitude, same direction, right? But different, but different magnitude. And so the length of our arrow can help us designate the, the magnitude of a vector. Whereas, again, if we have these same two spots, right? And then, so a person walked this way, and then a different person walked the opposite direction, right? So they both walked 10 meters. However, their directions are different. This is in the northeast direction. This would be in the southwest direction. So these are two different vectors because a vector has both magnitude and direction. So if we have a different direction, we have a different vector. If we have a different magnitude, we have a different vector as well. Now, something to understand, though, is that vectors can be slid. We can slide vectors as long as we don't change their magnitude or direction. So this vector, no matter where I put it, always has the same magnitude. It's always pointed in the same direction, so that vector never changes. So as long as I can slide something, you know, this way or this way, as long as I don't change the direction that it's pointing in or the length, meaning the magnitude, I don't change the vector. That comes into play when we add vectors. So the main way that we add vectors is what's called head to tail. And that's going to be that if we have the idea that let's say we have someone that walks here and then they walk here and then they walk here, right? Their total displacement would be this. So this would be their total. And we can have their first displacement, their second displacement, their third displacement all added together. And this would be appropriate because we added them head to tail. The head of this vector is to the tail of the next, the head of this vector is to the tail of the next, and so on and so forth. And then my total always goes from where I started to where I ended. So that's my total displacement in this case. If I have two vectors that look like this, a second one that looks like this, we'll call this A and B, A plus B would simply look like this. 
And again, my total then would be from where I started to where I end. And again, I think just thinking about it in terms of displacement would be the easiest, but it's, it's no different, right? If we're taking an object, right? And it has some forces acting on it. Maybe we have one force this way, we have another force this way, and then we have a larger force this way, right? I'm still gonna find the total force by adding them together. Force is a vector. And so I need to add these three forces together. And I do that by sliding them. So I can slide this one and draw that there. So we'll call this force A, we'll call this force B and force C. So A, B, here's A, and then I'll slide B up here. And again, my total then would be this. So this would be my total, okay? And it doesn't matter which order I add them in, just like adding five plus 10 and 10 plus five, both process get me 15. If I added A and then B, Oopsie, Let's, we'll go. So this here was adding C, then A, then B, right? Uh, if we add A and then B and then C, we get the same thing. If we add B and then A and then C, we get the same thing. So it doesn't matter which order I add them in. I'm also always going to get the same total here. Okay, so with this, we might not know exactly, you know, how do I get this value or how do I get this value? So there's a, there's a few different geometrical shapes that could form um, some things that come out nice and easy or uh, the, the best way that I think of it is, is understanding vector components. And then if we understand vector components, we can understand how we can add vectors in a simple way or in a complex way.